Roman First English Sermon Manuscript. Today, we will make an observation of Romans chapter 12, verse 1. In the city of Rome, Christians gathered at the Jewish synagogue on the Sabbath Saturday in order to hear the Bible. At a time of Jesus Christ and his disciples, the Bible was the Old Testament only, which was called as the Hebrew Scripture. To hear the Bible, they should go to the Jewish synagogue because at that time, the Bible was not easy to reach. It must be copied by the authorized Jewish scriber in order to distribute them to synagogues. And among them, there would be some copies with copy error, which was handed over for very expensive prices to the rich people. Most synagogues in the diaspora kept only one or very few copies of the Hebrew scriptures. In order to profess in a religion, you should have a secret books published and supplied by the uh, publishing organization of the religious group. For the Christian, the sacred book was the Old Testament at the time of Jesus Christ and his disciples, which was called Hebrew Scriptures by the Jewish people. It was read in the Jewish synagogue mostly every Saturday and other weekdays as planned by the official of synagogue. At the time of Jesus Christ's apostles, they believed in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and his sacrificial blood as ransom to redeem their sins. And they also followed the Moses law, sometimes even circumcision, until they had their own place such like a home of a believer for the congregation meeting place on every Sunday only, on which they celebrated the rise of Jesus Christ from death. In Acts chapter 15 verse 1, some men came down from Judea and began teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And to resolve this matter, Church of Antioch determined that Paul, Barnabas, and some others of them to send to Jerusalem concerning this issue. After there had been much debate, the Church of Jerusalem sent a letter to Antioch, as written in chapter 15, verse 27 to 29. Therefore we have sent Judas and Silas, who themselves will also report the same things by word of mouth, for it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these essentials, that you abstain from things sacrificed idols, from blood, from things strangled and from acts sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves free from such things, you will do well. Farewell. In order to be a Christian, a Gentile should be a God-feared, placelate by converting to Judaism. At the time of early apostolic Christian churches, they heard the Hebrew scripture at the synagogues from the regular meeting on the Sabbath, originally the gospel was declared by Jesus of Nazareth to the Jews only, as written in Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 and 6. Do not go on a road to Gentiles, and do not enter a seat of Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He answered, as described in Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, when a Canaanite woman asked him to cast out the demon possessed her daughter. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Whoever to be a Christian, he or she should know some of Hebrew scripture and Moses' law. 
Without knowing the Moses law, nobody could find the right reason why should believe in Jesus Christ and understand the sacrificial death on the cross of Jesus Christ. In order to repent any sins that you have committed, you should know the Moses law. Only the Moses law can tell you what is transgression to the God. Paul confessed in Romans chapter 7, verse 7, 9, 14, 19 to 20. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Far from me. On the contrary, I would not have come to know sin except through the law. For I would not have known about coveting if the law had not said, You shall not covet. I was once alive apart from the law. But when the commandment came, sin came to life, and I died. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am freshly sold to bondage to sin. For the good that I want, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. But if I do the very thing I do not want, I am no longer the one doing it, but sin that dwells in me. After suspension of persecution by the Roman Empire, the Christian church became a state church of the Roman Empire, exactly by the First Council of Constantinople in AD 381. In the meantime, the New Testament canon was developed and accepted by the East in A.D. 367, by the West in A.D. 382, and accepted at the Synod of Carthage for entire churches in A.D. 397. Until then, the Bible was the Old Testament only, and Christians gathered at the synagogue on the Sabbath together with the Jews, to hear the Bible. And they read letters and gospels from apostles separately. However, the Catholic Church persecuted the Jews, and the reason was the Jews crucified Jesus Christ to death. Opposing to their persecution, I would give the answer the Catholic Church as what Jesus told on the cross while he was dying, described in Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. In limited sphere, they were Roman soldiers, but in broad sphere, they were Jews to force him to be crucified. Actually, Jesus was crucified in order to meet his Father's will. No human being could crucify Jesus, Son of God, by their own will. It is very simple why the Catholic Church persecuted the Jews. They didn't read the Bible thoroughly and carefully as it was written. Even at uh, today's Christian Church, Moses' law is not read and taught seriously, which means most of the Christians don't know and understand Moses' law. Therefore, they don't know what the sin against God would be. Instead of that, what was being preached in Sunday sermon by pastors at the most Christian churches. After reading some verses of the Bible as a text of the sermon as a routine, Mostly his domestic, social, political, psychological, economical, amateurish knowledge and experiences with broadly known collected examples are delivered in, in preaching in order to touch the emotional sensitivity of the congregation. Most Christians' understanding of sins come from folklore sins with the folklore knowledge on the sins, what could they repent for to God? And why do they need the blood of Christ? Most of the Christians 
think they need the blood of Christ in order to get into the kingdom of heaven. And reluctantly, they need his blood for the redemption of their sins. Getting into the kingdom of heaven could be done by selection only. To be a Christian is to be redeemed by the blood of Christ. Pastors should well know the Moses law in order to clarify the sins against God. Christian pastors should be specialized in the Bible. Now let's read text, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. The Greek word is logiken latreia, which is translated in the English as spiritual service of worship. The root of logiken is logikos. In English, it means reasonable, logical, and thoughtful. Therefore, spiritual service is a service which has a biblical texture, words, reasonable and thoughtful understanding of congregation members at the service. Pastors should not try to lose train of thought of any listeners in order to be excited emotionally by his preaching, but cool down to be reasonable and thoughtful on what he is preaching, that is the spiritual service. Therefore, the followings are the title of the sermon, the service which is composed of Bible exactical sermon. Oh, oh, oh. 